Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk about Power Platform, specifically Power Apps Multicolor Modern Themes. Now you might be thinking, what do you mean by multicolored modern themes? Well, let's get into it. My name is David Warner. I am uh, a community contributor, I work for Quisitive, and love to collaborate with everybody in the community. So reach out if you have any questions. So the agenda, what is a modern theme multicolor modern theme? Well, it's a modern theme with more than shades of a single color. That's the concept, right? When we create the modern theme today, we can identify a color. It gives us multiple shades of a single color, but I'm talking about more than one single color or shades of a single color. So we're gonna have a quick overview of modern themes. We're gonna look at creating a custom multicolor modern theme. And then we're gonna talk about what you can and can't do with a custom multicolor modern theme and the method that I'm going to be implementing it. All right, so let's jump right into a demo. Now, before we kick this off, I did wanna mention if you've not already played with Modern Themes, I'm not gonna go step-by-step -step of every little feature that's available. Uh, I recommend you go watch April Dunham's video. I'll include a link to that in the show notes so you can check it out and kind of be aware of the different configurations that you can give it. I'm gonna explore what I've done here as an example, but I'm not gonna go into each and every little detail of the Modern Themes. So definitely if you need to, pause it. Hey, I'll wait while you go watch it and uh, come back and then let's kick it off. Okay. So what I've done here is I've created a couple of screens. I've got a theme home, theme info. We'll get into that in a minute. I've got a modern button right here and I've got a classic button, right? And so I've already turned on modern themes. You do have to turn it on. Uh, and when you do that, you get the little theme option right over here. Uh, so if I go in there, we can see that I've got the Power Apps theme already applied. I've got Teams, uh, other options available here. And if I click them, you can see things like my screen background and my buttons are taking shape of exactly what that theme color I've chosen is, right? Okay, everything's working as expected. Now, what if I want to create a custom theme? All right, cool, no problem. We're gonna come in, uh, we're going to select add a theme and I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna say add a theme, I'm gonna call it Warner Digital Purple. Okay, cool. I have a hex color ready, it's nice purple. And we can see it gives me those shades of that single color. So you get 16, I believe, total shades available. I do that, I click create, it creates it. Okay, that looks good and I can swap between those and we see that's working. Uh, now let's go ahead and add another one and I'll call it uh, Warner Digital Orange. And let me paste a hex color. And now we see, again, shades of that orange, right? Looking good, fine, great, no problem. Click create. We see them both showing up. Now I got a little orange on orange because those, uh, those banners are hard-coded with orange. But if I go back and forth, then we see it's looking good. But what if I wanted a combination of the two? What if I wanted a, a Warner Digital Porange or I wanted a Warner Digital Purple, or, you know, combination of purple and orange together? I can't do that as it stands out of the box. Or can I? So that question of can I is something that April and I were kind of chatting about the other night and started digging into exactly what makes up these modern themes. We know we have the theme editor here that we can use to create them, uh, but what and how does it actually work behind the scenes? Well, uh, the first thing to note is that when you go into your app, right? So if you click over here on tree view and click on app right here, uh, you actually can select a theme property in the properties dropdown, right? So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna select theme. And we see what's selected there right now is Warner Digital Purple because that's what I selected here in the themes. So if I change that to Warner Digital Orange, we see the colors have changed and we in fact see that the value has changed, right? But this is a power effects formula box. So what does that mean? Does that mean that we could put something in there that could change it completely or, I don't know, granularly identify and define the values? And how do we identify what those value names are? Well, that is where my modern theme info is coming in. So this is a screen that I created using a text box right here. And all I'm doing is accessing the app.theme. So app is where we were accessing the app right there. Theme is that property and we're essentially outputting it to JSON. So what we're looking at right here is the actual JSON definition of what a theme looks like. So we see we've got those color tokens. Uh, we see we've got primary uh, foreground and primary, and then we've got font and we've got a name, right? So it's taken on everything that I've identified in that property when I built it through the interface. Okay, cool. So does that mean that I can take this and actually plug that into that theme property at the app level? Well, let's try. 
And so before we try, let's just take a look at how we identified all of this, right? Uh, if I go back up into theme and I click up in here, then we can see that it's a record, right? And that's essentially what we have right here is even though we've outputted it into a JSON format, we know that it's essentially a record. So what I did is I took this JSON and I changed manually all of these values uh, to be two different colors, right? So in, in the case of darkers, I used purple. And in the case of lighter, I used orange, right? So I've effectively created a two-tone or two distinct different color color scheme. Now you could, with 16 different slots, you could create 16 different colors if you wanted to, probably not the best, but if you're working in an organization that has more than one color and more than the desire to have shades of that single color as your theme, well, now you could effectively do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a theme that I created and I'm just gonna paste it in here. So we know that this is looking for a record because that's effectively what that is. And remember, you could set up a drop down or radio buttons or whatever that changes all of this dynamically based on the names that are available, right? So you could get the values of your themes uh, and then you could change this based on a drop down, and others have shown how to do that. So at its most basic format, if I wanna overwrite it at the singular level, then I'm gonna paste this in. And what's happened is I'm essentially just identifying distinct colors for each of these, right? Now, again, I could have a single color different completely for each one of these. Uh, and I've identified the font, left that the way it is, and just gave it a name of Warner Digital. So now when I go back to my modern theme home, well, a couple things have happened, right? We see it's taking on that primary color. So if I go click on the classic button and go to the fill property, uh, I've got it taking on the darker 10 value. So if I were to change that to primary, uh, we see it's taking on that darker purple that the background of my screen is taking on. That's the color value that I associated to my background screen as the primary, right? Now the modern button doesn't seem to be inheriting it. So why is that? Well, there's one extra step to make this work. Uh, on each modern element, when we go down to style and themes, we see that there's a color palette. So it, it doesn't populate, that normally shows the color palette of the one that I've selected, uh, but we do know that this is a property. So if I, if I click on that, it takes us up to the base color palette property of that modern element. So now I can come in here and I can say app.theme.colors.primary, and now it's inheriting it, right? Or I could say, remember I set it to orange in the lighter color, so now it's got orange on orange. Not the best, right, orange on orange, uh, makes it kind of hard to see, but now what have we done? We've effectively got the lighter values in our theme uh, using orange, and the primary or darker colors, again, if I go change this to darker, say 50, it's getting a version of that purple. So all the darkers are 50 and all the lighters are 10, right? So if I come in here and say lighter 50, uh, that just gets another shade of that orange. Uh, and because now we've got the modern control property associated to the actual theme, if I come in here and I change this to Warner Digital, uh, okay, well, great. So we've got everything uh, inheriting again, right? Uh, because it is inheriting those specific properties. So we see uh, those colors are doing what they should be doing. But if I then come back into my theme uh, and go down to app theme, and instead of just calling the name, I paste back in that color scheme, right? So everything is inheriting it. So I've effectively created a two color modern theme. Again, all these colors, so all these colors right here, the darker colors are purple uh, in addition to the primary. So primary foreground obviously is all white. Uh, and then all lighter colors I've associated to orange. Okay, so what if I don't like the orange on orange? And I say, well, you know what? I, I actually want to change that to something like, uh, I don't know, let's say Wonka. We wanna make it a, a purple and green. So the darkers are gonna be purple uh, and the lighters are gonna be green. We'll create like an Oompa Loompa kind of thing, right? Oompa Loompa, and bam, I pasted that in and immediately you saw that get updated, right? So now I've got that theme. What it doesn't do is it doesn't show up in themes, right? Uh, because it's not technically created through the interface. Uh, and so I've just got it living right here inside of the theme property. Because what happens 
is if anyone comes in and selects a new theme, like we'll do right here, let me close that up, uh, and select a new theme, then our custom two-tone theme is gone, right? It's been replaced with the theme name that connects down to the actual collection of themes that we've associated uh, in the app. So it's gone forever, right? But what we could do uh, as maybe the next step of uh, making it scalable is we could come into, let's just go to our theme homepage and we'll go to on visible. Um, and I'll just create a global variable. So I'll just say set Warner digital uh, oompa, right? And now I'll paste in my record. And instead what I'll do, uh, so now I've got that set, I'm gonna go over to this window and come back. So the on visible fires, that uh, variable is now active. And I'm gonna come to my theme and go to the theme, uh, whoops, go to theme, there we go. And here I'm gonna say War Warner Digital Oompa, right? So that's my variable right there. And essentially that variable is associated to the record that it represents the theme. So now when I select that, look, that takes on that value, right? So what I could also do is I could have a couple of variables for the theme. So instead, I'll come back to here, I'll go to Unvisible. Uh, I've set up the Warner Digital Oompa uh, let me just go to and create set Warner Digital Basic, right? Or just call it Warner Digital Theme uh, and then paste in the theme. Now what I'm doing is I'm pasting in the theme that's the purple and orange. And you probably don't have all these hex values memorized. I'm, I'm not surprised. Uh, I don't either, but they are the purple and orange, right? Uh, and so now uh, I've got that set. I'll go between screens just to kick it off again. And if I go back to my app, go to theme, and I select Warner Digital Theme, right? It's showing up, available there. Now, as soon as I select that, it should be purple and orange. This modern button should change to orange, right? Because that was what we set up. And there we go. So we've got that now working. And if I change back to Warner Digital Oompa, we're back to green, right? So now I've got the ability and all these things are inheriting, right? So they are properly inheriting app.theme.colors.lighter50 uh, or uh, app.theme.colors.darker50. Uh, and so it's doing all those things that we would expect it to be. And if I ever do decide to change to an out of the box theme, right? Okay, great. They're inheriting steel, SharePoint looks good, right? Teams, okay, great. I come back in to uh, theme, right? I go back to tree view. Go to app, go to theme, and now I want to change back to Warner Digital. It's not been deleted because I'm not just storing it in the theme property, right? I'm storing it in a variable. So there we go, back to Warner Digital Oompa. So it makes it a little bit more scalable, right? It still lives in the app. So there's some better things we could do. We'll talk about that in another video. But let's first talk about what else you can't do. Okay, so let's jump back into our slides and let's jump over to what can't you do? Let's get that out of the way you cannot create additional properties. So we had like darker 10 through 70, you can't create 80 or double zero or anything like that. You can't create additional groups. We had color, font, and name. You can't create additional groups. Now, what I mean is you cannot do that when specifically referencing that JSON or that record using the app.theme reference point. So if you don't use app.theme, what can you do? You can create additional properties uh, and you can create additional groups, but not with the app.theme. So in my case, when I created the global variable Warner Digital Theme, I could add a custom name color to the colors group within that JSON or that record and I can reference it that way. Now, it's not going to inherit. If I lose that variable, or it gets removed from the system or something like that, then of course any element that is inheriting that will not work, so it's something to consider. So let's take a quick look at what that actually looks like. So I'm back in my app. We had set the Warner Digital Oompa. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my uh, modern theme. I'm gonna set up the uh, on visible. We'll open this up and I'm just going to quickly come in and I'm going to change that to lighter 90. Okay, so I'm creating lighter 90, doesn't exist. Uh, I'm gonna change this to, I guess we're in Oompa. So I'm going to just change it to whatever uh, the darker, we'll change it to a purple. 
All right, so technically this lighter 90 is a purple coming from darker. I just grabbed it from that, right? Uh, and I'll close that up. I'll go between just to instantiate. Uh, and now when I go back on to say, for example, my classic button or my modern button, we'll just go classic. And I come over here and I do lighter. We see, I don't have a 90. Uh, I only have 80, right? Uh, for some reason, that's what Microsoft is doing. They're limiting you in your record set to only what they provide in the out of the box modern themes. Now, will that change in the future? I don't know. It's not available. So you're really just, you are stuck with the tokens and 16 different slots. You can do something with them, but I could come in and I could say Warner digital, uh, what I do that Oompa colors dot. And then I come down. Well, now lighter 90 is showing up right? So if I come back and say lighter 90, that should go to purple and it does, right? So that's to be expected. That's great. Um, but what'll happen is if that variable just disappears from the system, or even in fact, if I come over and select another theme, I'll say select power apps, that is still inheriting the purple. Well, why? Well, because that particular variable and record set associated with that variable does still exist in the system. If it went away altogether, I'd get an error and you know, you'd have to come in and fix it anyways, but it's not inheriting from the uh, global theme app dot theme properties that you would want it to be associated with. So something to think about, right? Maybe you do stick with just the tokens that are part of the out of the box functionality with modern themes, but this does show that, Hey, you could create a theme that includes additional properties and reference that. So maybe you do create an additional group, right? So if we come back uh, to our app and go to theme, uh, or sorry, go into on visible, come back here. Uh, and maybe you create an additional section here. Uh, that's called like, you know, custom colors, uh, or something like that. Right. Uh, that's outside the scope of that. Again, you still run into the same risk, but it's important to know that you can technically do that. You just have to reference it in a very different way. You won't reference it with app dot colors, uh, or app.theme.colors, you'll have to reference it with however you set up your theme. In this case, we're setting it up as a global variable. So I could do global variable dot whatever my new uh, category is and reference it that way. All right, well, this video has gotten a little longer than I prefer. So let's wrap it up and talk about future videos. First, let's summarize. First thing, Use the theme record structure for that record JSON to create a true multicolor theme property and you'll stick that uh, into the theme property. Maybe not directly, right? So uh, create the theme in a way it won't be destroyed when swapping between themes uh, using, for example, that global variable. There are better ways. We'll talk about that in a moment. And stick with the supported theme tokens, uh, the darker one through seven and lighter, I think one through eight, using that app.theme that provides you insurance that if you go outside of that, your objects are going to still inherit properly from the app.theme. So when you swap between themes, maybe out of the box or create new themes, then your, your objects and your controls will uh, automatically inherit. If you don't, then it's okay. Just know what you're getting into. All right, so what am I gonna cover in future videos? We'll talk about additional categories. So using some of those calculated risks, understanding what it is you're doing uh, so that you can reference things if you know that that object or record is not gonna go away, that global variable. And then my favorite, let's talk about using it in a component library because then you create one source of truth for all of your citizen developers and makers to add, add into, right? They can plug into that component in the component library, inherit the theme, and use it everywhere. And then when you need to make changes, guess what? You just do it in the component library. All right, so thanks. See you next time.